At my 35th birthday party, during the cake cutting ceremony, my husband suddenly stood up in front of all the guests and slapped me hard across the face. Stop this drama, you idiot, he shouted. I don't like you. Go away from my life. I will marry my assistant. The room was in shock, and my mother in law supported her son. I decided to seek revenge, and within a few days, they were both arrested. Hello, my name is Maya, and I'm 35 years old. I live in Austin, Texas, and I'm a graphic designer. As I sit here, reflecting on my life, I can't help but think about the roller coaster ride it has been. It feels like just yesterday I was preparing for my 35th birthday party, a celebration that was supposed to be filled with joy, laughter, and love. Instead, it became a night that changed everything. As the day of my birthday approached, I was filled with mixed emotions. I wanted it to be perfect, but deep down, I sensed that something wasn't right. Daniel, my husband of seven years, had seemed distant for weeks. At times, I would catch him lost in thought, staring out the window as if he were looking for something he couldn't find. I remember thinking, what is going on in that mind of yours, Daniel? The night of the party arrived, and I was a bundle of nerves. My friends and family gathered at her home, and I wanted everything to be just right. I had spent hours arranging decorations, picking out the perfect cake, and making sure there was enough food and drink for everyone. I wanted this to be a celebration that people would remember. Wow, Maya, everything looks amazing, my best friend Olivia said as she walked through the door, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Thanks, Olivia. I just hope Daniel likes it, I replied, glancing around for him. I couldn't shake the feeling that he was unhappy about something. Olivia noticed my anxiety. Hey, don't worry. It's your birthday. Let's enjoy the night. She grabbed my hand and pulled me into the living room, where our guests were mingling and chatting. As I made my way through the crowd, I spotted Daniel chatting with his sister, Lisa. He seemed engaged in conversation, laughing at something she said. Maybe I'm just being paranoid, I thought to myself. But when I approached them, Daniel's laughter faded, and he turned to me with a tight smile. Hey, babe. Happy birthday, he said, but I could sense the disconnection in his tone. Thanks. Are you having fun? I asked, trying to sound cheerful. Yeah, sure, he replied, his gaze drifting away from me. My heart sank. Helen, Daniel's mother, arrived shortly after, her presence instantly creating an air of criticism. Maya, dear, I think you should have gone with a different color for the tablecloths. These just clash with everything, she said, her eyes scanning the room. I forced a smile. I thought they added a nice touch, but thanks for the feedback, Helen. As the night went on, I tried to focus on the positive, but Daniel's distant demeanor and Helen's constant critiques were starting to weigh heavily on me. I made small talk with my parents, who were proud and excited to see me celebrate another year. You've done such a great job, honey. We're so proud of you, my mother said, hugging me tightly. Thanks, mom. It means a lot, I replied, but my mind was still on Daniel. When it came time to cut the cake, I felt a surge of excitement. I could hear everyone's cheerful voices encouraging me. But then, just as I was about to slice into the beautiful creation, Helen interrupted. Maya, dear, why don't we follow the family tradition? It's important to honor our customs. Feeling emboldened by the festive atmosphere and the support of my friends, I replied, I appreciate that, Helen, but I'd like to do it my way tonight. At that moment, Daniel stood up abruptly. The laughter faded as he glared at me. Stop this drama, Maya, he shouted, and I froze, feeling all eyes on me. I don't like you anymore. Get out of my life. I'm going to marry my assistant. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. Silence enveloped the room, and I felt my cheeks burn with humiliation. I stood there, stunned, trying to process what had just happened. How could he say that in front of everyone? I looked at our friends, their faces a mix of shock and disbelief, and then at Helen, who merely nodded in agreement with Daniel. My heart raced as I turned and fled upstairs, tears streaming down my face. I felt like the walls were closing in on me. I collapsed onto my bed, unable to breathe. Moments later, I heard a soft knock on the door. Maya, it's me, Olivia. 
she said gently, opening the door. She rushed to my side, wrapping her arms around me. Oh my God, are you okay? I can't believe he did that. I don't know what happened, Olivia. I thought we were happy. I sobbed, feeling the weight of betrayal crushing my spirit. Maya, listen to me. This isn't okay. You need to leave him. He has been controlling you for a long time now. This isn't just a one-time thing, Olivia said firmly, pulling back to look me in the eyes. As I processed her words, I began to realize that I had been ignoring the signs for far too long. I thought of all the moments when Daniel's jokes had cut too deep, when he had dismissed my feelings, and how I always felt like I was walking on eggshells around him. I can't just leave, I said, shaking my head. He's my husband. I love him, but does he love you? Olivia asked softly. You deserve so much better than this. Sitting in the darkness of my bedroom, I felt a flicker of something new. Anger. I had been a victim for too long, and maybe it was time to reclaim my life. As I stared at my reflection in the mirror, I saw a woman who was tired of being treated like a doormat. I'm going to figure this out, I whispered, determination rising within me. I had to start planning my next move, and I knew it wouldn't be easy. As I wiped away my tears and gathered my thoughts, a plan began to form in my mind. I wouldn't let Daniel or Helen control my future any longer. I was ready to fight back, to expose the truth, and to reclaim my power. Little did I know, this was just the beginning of a journey that would lead me to self-discovery and empowerment, but first, I had to confront the darkness that surrounded me. In the days following that disastrous birthday party, my mind was a whirlwind of emotions. I was devastated, angry, and above all, determined. Daniel's words echoed in my head, I don't like you anymore. I'm going to marry my assistant. Those words felt like a dagger to my heart, but they also ignited a fire within me. I realized I had been living in a bubble, blinded by love, and it was time to face the harsh reality. Are you okay, Maya? Olivia asked when she came over a few days later. We sat in my living room, the remnants of the party still scattered around. I had tried to clean up, but the decorations felt like painful reminders of what had happened. I don't know, Liv, I admitted, feeling the weight of my situation. I keep replaying everything in my mind. I thought we had a good marriage. Olivia looked at me with empathy. Maya, sometimes the signs are there, but we choose to ignore them. You need to figure out what you really want. I want my life back, I said, my voice steady. I want to expose him for who he truly is. That's the spirit, she encouraged. But first, we need to gather some evidence. You can't just confront him without a plan. Over the next few days, I started paying closer attention to everything Daniel did. I, I meticulously noted his strange behavior and late-night phone calls. He had a habit of keeping his phone face down on the table, which was unusual for him. One night, I decided to stay up late and wait for him to come home from work. My heart raced as I heard the familiar sound of his key turning in the lock. Hey, Maya, you're still awake, he said, stepping into the living room, his expression unreadable. Yeah, just couldn't sleep, I replied, forcing a smile. How was your day? It was fine, he said, avoiding my gaze as he took off his shoes. I watched him, trying to gauge his mood, but the tension in the air was palpable. Daniel, can we talk about what happened at the party? I asked, my heart pounding. Do we have to? I thought we were past that, he replied dismissively, heading towards the kitchen. Past what? I pressed. You slapped me in front of our friends. That's not something we can just forget. He turned to face me, irritation flashing in his eyes. You know how my mother can be. You should have listened to her. Listen to her? Daniel, you were the one who humiliated me. I can't believe you would side with her after that, I said, my voice rising. Maybe you should take a look at yourself first, he shot back, storming off to the kitchen. I felt my heart sink. This wasn't going anywhere. As the days turned into a week, I continued my investigation. With Olivia and Lisa's help, I discovered that Daniel was seeing his assistant more frequently than I had realized. They would meet for coffee or dinner, and it all began to make sense. I felt a sickening knot in my stomach. One evening, while I was scrolling through social media, I noticed a picture of Daniel and his assistant, Mia, laughing together at a local restaurant. 
The caption read, date night with my favorite person. Hashtag blessed. I felt my blood run cold. They were having an affair and I had been blind to it. Liv, look at this, I said, showing Olivia the picture. Her eyes widened and she quickly took a deep breath. This confirms what we suspected. He's definitely cheating on you, Olivia said, anger flashing in her eyes. You need to confront him. I will, I replied, my voice firm. But first, I need to gather more evidence. I can't let him twist the story around. With renewed determination, I decided to set up a meeting with a lawyer. I wanted to understand my options and prepare for what was to come. After researching local attorneys, I found one with a solid reputation. During the consultation, I explained my situation. I suspect my husband is cheating on me and planning to take control of my finances, I told the lawyer, my heart racing as I laid everything bare. The lawyer listened carefully. Gathering evidence will be crucial for any legal action. Document everything you can, including dates, conversations, and any financial discrepancies. This way, you'll be prepared to protect yourself. Feeling empowered, I returned home and started organizing everything I had learned. I collected text messages, emails, and even notes from conversations that had raised red flags. The pieces of the puzzle were coming together, and I could feel the strength building within me. One evening, I was sitting at the kitchen table, going through my notes when Daniel walked in. He looked surprised to see me still awake. Working late, he asked, a hint of sarcasm in his voice. Just going over some things, I replied, keeping my tone neutral. What things? He pressed, stepping closer. Just some personal projects, I said, trying to deflect. He narrowed his eyes. You've been acting weird lately. Is there something you want to tell me? No, nothing at all, I said, forcing a smile. Just enjoying my birthday gifts, you know? Right, he replied, though I could see he wasn't convinced. As he walked away, I knew I had to be careful. The tension was thick, but I was no longer the same naive woman I had been just weeks ago. I was ready to fight back to reclaim my life. With the pieces in place, I prepared myself for the confrontation ahead. I knew the truth would come out, and when it did, there would be no turning back. Little did I know that the road ahead would test my strength and resolve in ways I never imagined. The days turned into a blur of planning and gathering evidence, and I felt both anxious and empowered. I knew it was time to confront Daniel about everything I had discovered. The thought sent shivers down my spine, but I had to do it. I owed it to myself to fight for my truth. One evening, after a long day of gathering more evidence, I decided that tonight was the night. Daniel had a meeting after work, and I planned to confront him as soon as he returned. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing heart. When he walked through the door, I was waiting for him in the living room. His expression turned from surprise to confusion when he saw my serious demeanor. Maya? What's going on? He asked, closing the door behind him. I stood up, gathering all my strength. We need to talk, Daniel. I said firmly. About what? He was already on the defensive, but I pressed on. About you and Mia. I know about the affair, I said, watching his face drain of color. His mouth opened slightly, and he stammered. What are you talking about? I pulled out my phone and showed him the picture of him and Mia from social media. This. You think I wouldn't find out? You've been lying to me. His eyes narrowed as he quickly composed himself. You're jumping to conclusions, Maya. That's just a friendly dinner he said, attempting to deflect. Friendly? Really? You expect me to believe that? You're married to me, and you're flaunting your relationship with your assistant on social media. My voice was shaking, but I refused to back down. Look, I can explain, he began, but I cut him off. Explain what? That you've been planning to leave me for her? That you've been stealing money for my business? The words were spilling out now, each one a release of pent-up frustration and betrayal. His expression shifted from surprise to anger. You don't know what you're talking about, Maya. This is all in your head. You're just being paranoid, he snapped. Paranoid? Is that what you call it? I have proof, Daniel. You're in way over your head, and I won't let you manipulate me any longer, I retorted, my voice gaining strength. Manipulate you? You think I'm the bad guy here? You're the one who never listens to me or takes me seriously, he shouted, his face flushed with rage. I stepped back, the intensity of the confrontation overwhelming me. You're right about one thing. This isn't working. You've been controlling and emotionally abusive. I deserve better than this. I felt a sense of liberation as I spoke those words. Daniel's face darkened. You think you can just walk away from this? You're nothing without me. You'll regret this, he warned, 
a menacing tone creeping into his voice. I won't regret standing up for myself. I've spent too long being treated like I don't matter. I'm done being your victim, I said, feeling the weight of my resolve. I'm taking action. His eyes flashed with anger, but beneath it, I saw a flicker of uncertainty. You think you can take me on? You have no idea who you're dealing with, he sneered. I know exactly who I'm dealing with, I said. A coward hiding behind manipulation and lies. At that moment, I realized that the confrontation was only the beginning. I had the power to expose the truth, not just to Daniel, but to everyone who had ever doubted me. I would no longer allow him or his mother to dictate my life. With my heart racing, I stepped toward the door. I'm contacting a lawyer and gathering everything I need. This isn't over, Daniel. You can't silence me anymore. As I walked away, I felt an overwhelming sense of relief, mixed with fear. I was stepping into uncharted territory, but I knew I had to keep moving forward. I would reclaim my life, no matter the cost. The road ahead wouldn't be easy, but I was ready for the fight. The turning point was near, and I could feel the momentum building within me. I was determined to not only expose the truth, but to embrace my newfound strength. After that intense confrontation, I felt a surge of determination coursing through my veins. I had finally stood up for myself, but now I needed to follow through. The next day, I met with my lawyer to discuss my options in detail. As I sat in her office, I could feel the weight of the world lifting off my shoulders. Maya, it's crucial to gather as much evidence as possible. You mentioned financial discrepancies, she asked, her eyes focused on me. Yes, I suspect Daniel has been embezzling money for my company. He's always had access to our accounts, I explained, feeling a mix of anger and resolve. Let's start by obtaining bank statements and any correspondence related to your business. The more proof we have, the stronger your case will be, she advised, jotting down notes. As I left the office, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. I spent the next few days digging through documents, bank statements, and emails, searching for anything that could help me build my case. Every time I uncovered a new piece of evidence, my resolve grew stronger. With Olivia and Lisa by my side, I discovered that Daniel had been diverting funds from my business account into a separate account for months. The betrayal cut deep, but I channeled my pain into action. I knew I had to be prepared for the inevitable confrontation with him and the fallout that would follow. A week later, I received a call from my lawyer. Maya, we have enough evidence to proceed with filing for divorce and exposing Daniel's embezzlement. Are you ready for this? Absolutely, I replied, my voice steady. Let's do it. When the day finally arrived, I felt a mix of anxiety and excitement. It was time to face Daniel and reveal everything. I decided to invite him to our house, under the guise of wanting to talk things through. I knew it would be the perfect setting to unveil my plan. When Daniel arrived, he seemed surprised to see me sitting at the dining table, documents spread out before me. What's all this? He asked, his brows furrowing in confusion. I wanted to show you something important, I said, my heart racing. I've gathered evidence of your deceit and financial crimes. You can't run from this anymore. His expression shifted from confusion to panic. What are you talking about? He asked, his voice trembling. I have proof of the affair with Mia and the money you've been stealing from my company. You think I wouldn't find out? You've underestimated me. Daniel, I said, the weight of the words giving me strength. He stood up, his face flushed with anger. You think this will end well for you? You're making a big mistake, he hissed. Maybe it's a mistake to have ever trusted you, I replied, feeling empowered. I won't let you control my life any longer. You're going to face the consequences of your actions. Just then, there was a knock at the door. It was my lawyer and a couple of officers. Daniel Thompson, you are under arrest for embezzlement and domestic abuse, one of the officers announced, stepping inside. Daniel's face turned white as he realized the trap I had set for him. You can't do this, he shouted, but it was too late. As the officers cuffed him, I felt a sense of liberation wash over me. For the first time, I was no longer the victim. I was reclaiming my life. After they took him away, I felt a wave of relief mixed with disbelief. I had done it. I had stood up for myself and exposed the truth. The darkness that had overshadowed my life for so long was finally lifting. In the weeks that followed, I focused on rebuilding my life. I poured my energy into my work and surrounded myself with supportive friends and family. I felt stronger, more independent, and ready to embrace my future. One evening, as I was working late in my studio, I paused to reflect on everything that had happened. I realized I had come full circle. I had faced my demons and emerged victorious. 
The road had been difficult, but I had found my voice and my strength. As I looked out the window at the setting sun, I felt a sense of peace. I was ready to write my own story, free from the shadows of the past. I knew that the journey of self-discovery had just begun, and I was excited to see where it would lead me next. I had learned that true empowerment comes from within, and I was finally ready to embrace my life on my own terms.